every vertebrate, every animal on this planet with a backbone uh, has an endocannabinoid system. And that's a natural system uh, where the body produces chemicals that bind what are called cannabinoid receptors in the brain and the spinal cord and throughout the body. And what the natural system does is a sort of overarching controller, if you like. It's a modulator of everything we do. So it promotes what's called homeostasis. It promotes balance in the body. It, it's, it calms down when things are over overexcited in neurological terms. It, it speeds up when things are underexcited. So it acts as a sort of balance to everything. Um, and it's through the endocannabinoid system uh, that the phytocannabinoids, that's the cannabinoids in the plant, help. They supplement, they add to um, the, our own endocannabinoid system. And that explains why cannabis potentially has such a wide range of uses. People say, well, it can't help anxiety and, and epilepsy and pain and Crohn's disease and um, you know, all those other things it does. It can't do that. It must be some sort of snake oil because no, no medicine does all that. But actually, if you know it works through the endocannabinoid system, which has a role to play in all nervous system transmission in the body, then you realize that actually it can have this role. Uh, in a whole variety of things. So that's why cannabis is so exciting and so potentially useful. Okay, we need more evidence for lots of those things, sure. Uh, but potentially it's a really exciting new type of medicine that could have a big impact on a lot of different long-term disabling conditions. I'm Mike Barnes and I was trained as a neurologist and a rehabilitation doctor. I worked in the field of um, uh, longer term disorders for a long time, like multiple sclerosis and then more recently traumatic brain injury and the rehabilitation of that. That's my sort of medical background. And then it was about, actually a long time ago now, about 20 years ago, um, I was first involved with uh, medicinal cannabis when GW Pharma, uh, the first company to ever get a licensed cannabis medication, came along the scene. I was involved in the development of their Sativex program and Sativex is, was the first um, cannabis properly licensed medicine. Um, so I've been interested in it for a long time. And then more recently, up to date, about four years ago, I got more involved. I was asked to do a report for the thing called the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Drug Policy. Um, and then got involved with uh, Hannah Deacon and uh, San Alfie to get the first ever license for cannabis. And since then, I've really now just involved in cannabis medicine. And indeed, I've pretty well retired as a neurologist these days. So I'm just now, you could say, I'm a cannabis physician these days. Hannah and I now work together with Maple Tree Consultancy. Um, and that came about because I was asked to do quite a lot of consultancy work and advice uh, for various companies, from hemp companies to people who wanted to establish themselves in the UK or people who are already in the UK and wanted to develop a, um, a cannabis cultivation um, media opportunities. And Hannah was being asked to do the same thing, albeit from a slightly different perspective. Uh, so we thought it would be a good combination to, to join together with her background and expertise from the patient side, if you like, and my expertise on the medical side. And uh, I think it's a good partnership and a good consultancy. And we're working now with a dozen or more different companies in lots of different aspects of cannabis, mainly developing as cannabis medicine in the UK. There's now 50 countries worldwide that have, in some way or other, uh, licensed um, cannabis for medical purposes. Uh, so we're, you know, we're way behind many established countries like Canada and Australia and Germany who've got a long way ahead in that field. Why are we so far behind? I think there's a sort of natural British conservatism, if you like. Uh, we're not quite adventurous uh, in a sensible way. Uh, I think, although in fairness to the government, they did change the law after being very stubborn for many years and due to the uh, campaign largely around Hannah and Alfie. Um, so they did change the law, but now it hasn't really caught up. The medical profession hasn't really caught up with the change of the law. And I think that's largely about conservatism, largely that they want to look at cannabis as a pharmaceutical product which it can't really be forced into a pharmaceutical hole because it's a botanical product. It needs looking at it from a different way and the medical profession aren't really used to assessing a medicine from that perspective. And I think it's going to take a while before that's accepted in the medical profession and available as it can be now, but isn't on the, on the National Health Service. Then there's the CBD industry, which is, is quite thriving in this country at the moment, but I'm worried that uh, it's going to be stifled, if that's the right word, because of the novel food regulations. And I, 
I think uh, particularly after COVID, we need a new industry. We need a, an industry that develops um, jobs, uh, develops tax income for the country and the CBD and then the medical cannabis industry is ideal for that. Um, yet I'm just worried that this conservatism and the novel food regulations and all the bureaucratic red tape that might come around that is going to stifle that industry before it's, um, before it's got going. And uh, running alongside this, we've seen a couple of new medical cannabis cards that have, uh, that have been released yeah. onto the market. Um, do you have any opinion on these, on, on how that they're, that they're working? Yeah, I think they're a good idea. Um, and why I say that is that at the moment, sadly, the NHS isn't prescribing medical cannabis. So I think there's two exceptions to that. So it's not really, it can do legally. There's no reason why an NHS doctor can't prescribe it, but they're not at the moment. And I think that will come over the next couple of years. So at the moment, the only way to get a, a cannabis prescription is to see a specialist doctor in, one, in a private clinic, which is fine. But of course, the downside of that is the expense. Um, and although the prices are coming down quite rightly, particularly through 2021 project we've just talked about, uh, it's still expensive. You know, and the average price now for an adult, say, with pain, which is a typical referrer, something like £500 a month. You know, and it was more than that, it was twice that much, uh, even a few months ago. So it's coming down, but even so, £500 a month, £6,000 a year is a lot of money, particularly in the post-COVID era, people losing jobs, and a lot of people, most people, can't in any way afford that. So that's the background. Uh, so some people really are forced, uh, even though they could get it, to, to grow their own. Uh, or obtain it illegally. And I think that people, that's a very sad scenario, uh, but I think if people are using cannabis in a responsible way just for their own medical benefit, not selling it on the black market or anything like that, but just their own medical benefit, then this, these cards offer the opportunity f to show the law enforcement, the police that, okay, I am using this, it's strictly legal, but I'm using it uh, for proper purposes, just for my own benefit. And I think that will really help those who can't otherwise afford it. So I'm all for the uh, card system and I hope it develops well. I'd like to see that uh, that's a little bit stronger in the sense of perhaps getting a, a cannabis doctor to say, yes, all being equal, you would get a prescription, but you can't have one because you can't afford it, sort of thing. Um, and that might be a little bit stronger. But uh, as the principal, I think it's a great idea and, and, and good luck to both of those cards. I hope they develop and I hope they're widely accepted. My name is Sam Cannon and I am the founder of Beyond Green. On the 2nd and 3rd of December this year, the UN will vote on the World Health Organization's recommendation on the rescheduling of cannabis. This is a mammoth moment in time. Please like, comment and share these videos so that the truth can be told and that the planet and everybody on it can benefit from this truly, truly incredible plant once again. Thank you.